Good afternoon. I'm going to give you a quick look at the technology behind our hybrid services. And like a normal minute person presentation, this will take about three minutes. First though, let me define what we mean by hybrid services. These are the four phases of our online services, with hybrid services being the third. Remember before the pandemic? I'll call those our pre-COVID services. These were our normal in-sanctuary services. Everything, of course, happened in the sanctuary, all the delivery and all the viewing. Then COVID shut down our church and we started our video services. These are the online services that we started to post to YouTube in March of 2020 and ran through the summer. These are made up from videos we build individually in our homes. Then all the pieces are edited together to create the service, which Lisa uploads to YouTube. Last fall, we were allowed to open up our church again, but with a limited attendance, so we moved into our hybrid services. These are a flexible mix of live and pre-recorded material. We live stream them to YouTube on Sunday mornings, and Lisa also burns a few DVDs. We tried to make the viewing experience for those of you at home as similar as possible uh, to those in the sanctuary. We also plan for a move back to video services when a new COVID wave hit and possibly repeated several times. And we have recently been forced back into our video services. A primary goal of our hybrid services is to not put pressure on anybody to attend in person, whether that be to help us deliver the service or to view the service. If somebody feels safer staying at home, they should be able to stay at home and still enjoy the service. Someday the pandemic will be over and we'll start our post-COVID services. These will be our back to normal services, well, back to our new norm, whatever that's going to be. The board, based on the success of our video and hybrid services, has decided to continue live streaming post COVID. We're already working on the technologies and techniques we'll need for those services. Let's remind ourselves of some of the highlights of our hybrid services. Something that's kept me excited are the many opportunities we've had to share our work with others. One of our earliest innovations was our virtual choir. We got started on this for our second video service way back in March 2020 and have produced well over 100 recordings. Because we were early users of these techniques, we ended up helping several dozen other churches get their virtual choirs up and running. And as you can see from this shot, vocalists from other churches have often helped our virtual choir. And some of our vocalists have helped other churches, including local, regional and national levels. Thank you, Betty, Rob, Lisa, and everybody who has sung or played with us. You all rock. Another highlight has been Reverend Ted's use of the digital technologies to enhance his services and sermons. Remember this picture, which after decades of accumulating dirt and grime was cleaned to reveal the disciples on the other side of that window? Reverend Ted now uses pictures to help him make his points. Like they say, uh, picture is worth a thousand words. This shot, though, is something we can't do post-COVID. At least I don't know how to do it yet. Somehow Eve has Reverend Ted shove the picture off the screen. For those of you who don't know, Eve does all the recording and video editing of her dad's service segments. Thank you, Eve, for all the work you've done since last summer. Using videos that people make at home has let Reverend Ted reach out to lots of you for content, and he's had amazing success. These made at home videos were a necessity during our video and hybrid services phase, but will still be a possibility post COVID. I went through some of our services to find these examples, but every service has several great contributions. We've been making these services for close to a year now, so I could likely find a hundred or more examples. I thought maybe I'd just better stop at these couple, otherwise I'd be here for an hour. But thank you to everybody who's done such a wonderful job contributing content for our video and hybrid services. We have been so blessed. And this, of course, is two way. Not only do we get content from people's homes, but lots of people watch the service from their homes. Our YouTube videos often have close to 300 unique viewers. That includes viewers from across Canada, a surprising number from the US of A, and even some from overseas. And then there are the DVDs that Lisa makes and distributes. And now Cindy is looking at getting our services aired on cable TV. Wow. 
In our pre-COVID services, Reverend Ted's storybook time with the children was always a hit. But most of the congregation and none of the choir could see the book. We implemented our storybook cam as part of our hybrid services and it has been a hit. These shots are Reverend Ted reading last week's book and Eve setting up the storybook cam at their home. We hope to be able to capture, oh sorry, we hope to be able to continue using the storybook cam post COVID. We're going to take a quick look now at the technology behind all this. This is Michael at our temporary tech table, working on the laptop we use to stream for the hybrid services. The next, app, next laptop over to Michael's right is the one he uses to monitor the YouTube upload. Michael, you'll be happy to know that the old laptop has been replaced with a brand new custom built desktop. And it's all housed in a great computer desk donated by the McKinney's. Michael and Eve are our streaming technicians and they can both operate all the tech we're about to look at. Marcel and Rowan are another key to our success since they run the soundboard and mix the audio that's fed to our videos. One of the first guidelines of streaming is that the audio is more important than the video. Thank you to Eve, Michael, Rowan, and Marcel. This is a detailed look at the technologies we're using. Each of these boxes and connections took several weeks of research and set up to get it working, so it's been a busy year. The purple and red things are works in progress. As you can see, there's still lots of work to do. This is a simpler look at the technology. Central to it all is OBS Studio. That's a free program that we use to manage all the video and audio inputs and stream to YouTube. We'll soon have two of the main cameras. We hope to be able to use 85 inch TVs for projection in the sanctuary post COVID, but don't yet have final approval for this expenditure. Our approach to getting all this working is innovative enough that I was able to trade our procedures and documentation for that second PTZ optics camera. As a result of that, I'm now helping a score of churches implement similar systems. If you're interested in learning more about any of this, get in touch with me or drop by the tech table after a service, after the pandemic, please. But let us know how we're doing. We're always trying to improve our services and any feedback you might have is important to that process. Thank you.